keep winning. <laughs> so, we are leaving Sejuna this morning. We stayed overnight at Shelley Beach Caravan Park just so that we could power up, fill up the water tanks and get Shanda to do a service on the truck for oil, water, tyres, make sure that anything hasn't come loose over the last five to six weeks. Uh, a Nullarbor, wow, long road. It's the longest straight stretch of road in the world. 90 miles is the straight. However, the Nullarbor stretches 1,100 kilometers. So along the way, apparently we're gonna be, uh, could run into 100,000 camels. I'm sure we're not gonna come across 100,000 all at once, but there's 100,000 camels out there. It's, um, the Nullarbor is Latin for no trees. So I can really see that the kids are gonna be uh, bored with not much view, but there's lots to see along the Nullarbor. I'm actually looking forward to it. There's the Great Australian Bight, lots of turnoffs, lots of roadhouses. So it's, uh, I'm actually looking forward to it. It's gonna to be tops. 1,100 kilometers, you reckon, Luis? It's gonna be a long week. So if that's the case, there's only one way to film this, fast. stop along the Nullarbor is Penong and uh, we've come across a windmill farm. Check out all these windmills here. It is stifling hot, the flies are driving me insane and we have the biggest windmill in Australia, 35 foot across the blades. There's several of them around Australia and this one's right here. Australia's biggest windmill. Climbing that windmill was greasy as. Big dirty big machines. I need to wash my hands. Big. I'll pump it for you. Pump some water. <laughs> that a go. This has been on my list of places to see. The lake's nice and pink today, so the temperature and the salinity must be right for that to happen. Pretty damn cool.
first day on the Nullarbor. We've pulled into a place called Cactus Beach. Very, very lucky. It's Easter Saturday. We knew we'd have dramas getting into a spot. We knew it. And we did. Uh, people have come here and on the reviews said that you just can't get a spot. It is a private property and not so squeezy. Now, I don't want to get into the uh, caravan versus motorhome debate, but today our little motorhome's paid off. We squeezed it into a tiny spot, got chatting to our neighbour uh, from Foster, actually, in New South Wales. Lovely guy, didn't mind us being close to him, and this is the very, very last spot for today. Rolled in here about five o'clock, like I said, Easter Saturday. Didn't like our chances, I thought we'd be sleeping back out on the main road, which is on the Nullarbor Plain, probably not ideal. So Cactus Beach, it's popular for surfers all around the country. I'm not a surfer myself, but upon driving in here, there's surfers everywhere. Yeah, in combi vans, go figure. Uh, yeah, we're really happy, and let's go check the beach out. Look, that guy's got a wave out there. Single surfer out here. I want to know if it's Bodie. If anyone here has seen Bodie, can you let us know? We want to meet Bodie. <laughs> Rascally Wabbit found us all the way out here in the Nullarbor Plain. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> wow. Hear him? Yep. The next campsite up is doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Easter egg hunt. You can hear him. Show me what you got, girls. We've got some eggs and a bunny. And what are we having for breakfast? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Good morning and happy Easter Sunday. What were you doing on Easter Sunday? Well, we're at Cactus Beach, but we're leaving this morning and uh, venturing on our merry way down the Nullarbor, still heading west. I must say Cactus Beach has been a little gem. Uh, we found out this morning that um, it was a it's actually a national icon in the surfing community all around the world and Rip Curl Australia had approached the uh, owners of this this private property and they wanted to commercialize it and make it a big tourist attraction but basically the landlord said bugger off uh, we wanted to want it to remain how it is so good on them for that it's pretty rare these days that um, things that become all commercial.
Chloe. Yeah. This is the original roadhouse. This is how they would have served people back in the day. Did you find cold ice creams? Oh, yeah. you put it there? I, did you put it there? I, I think someone did. I didn't. Didn't you? Alright. So this one's chocolate, this one's vanilla, and this one's strawberry. What's it? Can I help you? Oh, Call cold, like. cold beer, please. There you go, young and, fella. And how much is that? Oh, two gold. Strawberry ice cream, right? So vanilla ice cream, strawberry topping. Hang on, I just radio out the back. Love a strawberry ice cream, please. Vanilla ice cream, strawberry topping. Copy that. Look at the old cash register. Yeah. I'm gonna ring it up for you. Oh, the even worse. I think that stopped ringing things up uh, many moons ago. <laughs> Check out this little fella. How prehistoric are they? Hello, little guy. He is not very happy with me, I don't think. Hello. Hello. Straight out of the Jurassic era. site today I noticed that there was a bunch of rocks colorful rocks rocks that are people drawn on and basically it's like a little advertisement of people's travels if they've got a YouTube channel or Instagram so I thought I would come inside get some textures from the girls collection grab a flat rock and I set out to do a little bit of artwork let's have a gaze this is what I've been doing this afternoon very flesh no criticism about uh, the exact artwork that's there, but you know, it looks damn good. Make sure when you come to this camp spot, look for our rock. <laughs> Bunda Cliffs. That's me. Yes, kids, I think I found my happy place.
home for today. Home for the night? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. So here's tonight's dinner being prepared at eight o'clock this morning. How you ask? It's Lucy's Thermo Pot. Yeah, many people haven't seen these and I don't know why. They are so good, such a good invention. Uh, there's a few on the market now. It's actually a, it, it's a gigantic thermos. That's what it is. And you, uh, you cook in the morning in this heavy based Large pot. What is it, Lise? Uh, tonight we're doing a chicken casserole. So we've got chicken, uh, pumpkin, sweet potato, onion, peas and corn, with carrots. We're basically trying to use up all our vegetables before we go into um, Western Australia because there's food restrictions as what you can and can't take. And basically you can't take any fruit or, f veg fruit or fresh vegetables. But so. Yanni is lightly heating that up right really right? yeah so i'll brown the chicken off i uh, put the veggies in i'm just going to put some stock and some flavoring in then i'll put the lid on let it um simmer for about 20 minutes and then i'll do the rice which is in the next stage i'll show you that and then that cooks for the rest of the day while we're in transit so it, we've cooked it for over four to six hours we've even done one that went um in the pot for eight hours and when we took it out it was steaming hot absolutely beautiful with no electricity no electricity so it's just this initial 20 minutes and then that's it for the day there you go it's like a giant thermos and inside it looks like one it's all insulated and that's what causes the thermal reaction of cooking through the day <laughs> So this is very interesting. We come across a raw flying doctor service emergency uh, runway. It's not what you think. It's not just out in the field. Uh, it's on the actual Nullarbor Plain Highway. Um, so this is where the RFDS service would land the plane for accidents. What we noticed was on the Nullarbor, the shoulders suddenly become really, really massive, really wide. And it's clearly marked where they land the plane. We'll take it up and show you. been on for how long Liz? Wow. Um, all day today while we're all, driving down the Nullarbor. Yeah, what time is it now? 7.30. It's been on for like eight hours. It's like a crock pot with no power. No. Eight or nine hours. Okay, ready? Come in mm -hmm. close. Haha. <laughs> Trick jar. <laughs> ready? Watch your fingers. Perfectly cooked rice. Get these ones out. Oh, that's actually hot. I need my oven mitts. <laughs> and this is our dinner. Oh. You can't see it probably, but there's steam coming off that. That's hot. Oh, it smells mm. beautiful. And considering where we are at the moment, a nice warm meal is going to do us well. It's actually cold here in the bite, isn't it? Freezing, actually. Bit of freezing. How hungry is everyone? Pretty hungry. Ravished. Yes. I've turned this baby off. Chloe, dinner time. <laughs> that looks so awesome. Um, this. This is daddy's. This has been cooking oh. all day. This is crazy. And you said. I've stolen mother's spot. Okay, bon appetit.
stopped at a stop for lunch. This seems to be our staple uh, whilst travelling on the road for lunch. Ham, cheese and salad wraps. And I've got to feed them because they're hungry. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> what a big mouse. Oh, that was so... Dad's put this little kitty cat to sleep. She was, till we turn the light on this thing. Yeah, turn the light back on. Hi, Bonnie. Wait. Hi. Did Daddy send you to sleep? It's time to say goodbye to beautiful, underrated South Australia. Uh, it's been awesome. We are literally about three or four or five vans down from the Western Australian border. To enter, we've got our G2 passes, which is what you need to get through. We've got rid of all fruit and veg, hopefully there's no drama. So we're in the queue. They actually come into your van and inspect everything, make sure you're not carrying fruit and veg, uh, which is not a problem, but um, we had that happen at the South Australian border. So I'll see you on the other side. So we made it into the state that's been so strict and wouldn't let anybody in. Flock Arts are here. Woo! Mm. We're not going anytime soon. It's time to have. A flockies party. So we just filled up Majura to show Jess. I'm giving Jess some. Uh, servicing responsibilities. Yes. She's going to do all the fuel economy calculations for our journeys. When they're serviced. Clean the windshield, she's going to do a lot of stuff. It is so hot out there, the service station attendant said that several weeks ago it hit 52 degrees. So hot. It's, That's what he meant by when he said 52. It's hot, crazy. it's high 30s, it is crazy. High 30s now, he said about 4 o'clock it'll hit peak, it may oh. hit 40. But the truck air conditioning's working really good. Thank God we got that fixed before we left Sydney. So anyway, we'll continue on. We're going to hit a, uh, a holiday park in about 100 kilometres from here, and that'll be us for the day. We're getting off the road. It's been a really, really hot day. The hottest, I think, since we've been on the road. So, holiday park is a loose term, wouldn't you say? Yeah, holiday park. Dust bowl, probably. <laughs> it's a All right. See ya. That hot road It is again. too hot. <laughs> Too hot, Chloe, huh? Mm -hmm. It's very long. So we made it to Cocklebitty, to Dust Bowl Roadhouse, uh, about halfway along the Nullarbor, or maybe a bit further west than halfway. Uh, what a hot day. Man, it was a stinker. One thing I have noticed is the lack of water. These big dust bowls are like those western movies where there's just no water, like I'm talking none. Uh, if you, no luck of flies though, look at them, they're insane. If you do need water, I'll show you what you've got to do. You've got to buy it. It's $2 for 10 litres. You put your $2 here, and there's your tap. Knock yourself out. So my advice for anyone travelling the Nullarbor, carry beer. Lots of beer. Uh, because if you don't, you'll go really thirsty and you'll die. That's it. There you go. You heard it here first, folks. Another ball plane, beer, lots of it. Goodbye. Poor darling, my little baby's got a loose tooth. Which is requested. She's actually requested. The daddy pulls it out. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> if you get the chills, fast forward. Don't watch. <laughs> Ready? So I got that. 
Let me look. Yes, darling, can come out. Ready? Have me off that. Big dead breath. I can't get in there. Now. Ready? Uh huh. Don't hold Jesse's hand. What just happened, Bibby? Daddy pulled my tooth out. Yeah? Show us. Oh, nice. Did it hurt? No. Bleed? A little bit. You're going to get some money tonight. Are you excited? And I asked Daddy if he could share um, my money with me since he pulled it out. <laughs> what did he say? He said, um, he said, well, if the tooth fairy comes, then it's all yours. Ooh, and she is going to come. Now Bibi can say, I lost my tooth in Western Australia. <laughs> Things you see on the Nullarbor. We're yeah. tired driving our motor home. Yeah. But this is Baz and Nana. Yep. They've ridden a push bike over a thousand kilometers. A thousand kilometers. They're fitter than I am, obviously. <laughs> Good on you guys. Do things you see on the Nullarbor Plains. Thanks for pulling up on your push bike, uh, guys, and saying good day. Yeah, very interesting couple and uh, safe travels, huh? Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Yeah, have fun on your trip around us. And you. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, how cool is that? A couple on the push bike. All right, so he's just told me, Baz, uh, there is a reason why he's doing something so crazy. He's raising funds for cancer. He said his sister's got cancer and... Um, Unlikely to survive, unfortunately. But there he is. They're going around Australia. Might donate some funds to him, eh? Anyway, he said there's a guy further west on a horse going around Australia. I think he's on two horses. Uh, his name's Irwin, and he's really good for a chat if we pull up. He said he'd love to meet our family. So we're looking for Irwin going around Australia on his horse. Erwin on the horse. Looking for you, Erwin. Erwin on the horse. Let's go. We're still traveling along the Nullarbor and what do we find in the middle of nowhere? A dump point. A dump point. So we've been told never drive past a dump point without getting rid of your toilet. So jump for shame. We're about 15 kilometers away from the western side of the 90 mile straight. I think we found Irwin the horseman horse float in here. I can see you, I can see you Erwin, I think it's you. The guy that's going all around Australia on a horse. Let's go and see if we've found Erwin. I don't see any horses. Yeah, but I see a horse float. Didn't he say that he was walking though? And who's in the middle of the Nullarbor Plain with a horse float? Is it a horse float? Yeah. yeah. So we found Irwin, or should I say, Mrs. Irwin, <laughs> Monique. She's been lovely to show us through her, um, uh, 
uh, equestrian <laughs> RV, which you call it an equestrian RV, I suppose you would. Horse uh, Restored, like we did with ours, and have a go at it. Work of art. Do they track the flies? Yeah, you know, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> Just I think they should have a wash, probably. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. <laughs> um, Baz and the push bikes told us all about you. Oh, yep, yep. So I finally um, got to meet Erwin. I've had my Erwin fix. <laughs> the flies are incredible. Oh, what flies? So Erwin's taking three and a half years to walk these horses all around Australia. And right. Just another ball, <laughs> am I right? Two and a half months on the cross and eye ball. Yeah, yeah. To Adelaide, yeah. Um, all for a great purpose beyond blue. Yeah, the horses have been amazing. So yeah, so far so good. Well, we wish you all the best, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Nice and to meet you, pal. Good meeting all everybody. Right. Tales of the trail, was it? Thanks Tales for everybody Tales out there the that's uh, that's been looking after me because I've I've met a lot of nice people, you know, that stopped or you know just talked or whatever. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. Good on you, buddy. People are very good. <laughs> ten out of ten, pure. <laughs> <laughs> See Thank you around you. there. Okay, Bye. Sure. See ya. We stayed here last night at the Belladonia Roadhouse. It's actually a BP service station, but there's a museum on something really cool that happened in the 70s. This is of particular interest to me, uh, NASA and space research. A uh, Skylab, well, it's called Skylab, a space station crashed here in the 70s. So we're gonna take Jess in for a bit of high school stuff. Check it out. <laughs> At 12.38 a.m. on July 12, 1979, a U.S. space station called Skylab, weighing 77 tonnes, crashed to Earth after being in orbit for six years. The unmanned wreckage was scattered across Esperance, Western Australia, to Balladonia on the Nullarbor Plain. Locals collected large pieces of the wreckage for financial rewards from NASA in the United States. The President of America, Jimmy Carter, personally telephoned the Balladonia Roadhouse to apologise for the miscalculation of Skylab's re-entry and the litter caused by the wreckage. What you're looking at now is part of the wiring harness that was burnt into stone.
That right there is Skylab. We made it. Woohoo! We did. Yes. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was long, hmm. but um, lots to see. It's Why are we in the middle of a road? Oh, I wanted some time out from the kids. Maybe they should be in the middle of the road. Maybe, but I'm happy to be here for the moment. Ah. There's no one else out here anyway. It's just us. A bit different to where we're from. Just a bit. Just a bit. Well, what do you want to do? Shall we take them to the end? Yeah. It's not that much further. We get to the end. Let's do it. Let's go. Famous 90 mile straight sign, Nullarbor Plain, Western Australia. I really wanted to make a stop here. It's got a little bit of a sentimental value, even though I've never been here before. 14 years ago, my uncle Michael uh, was on a road trip back in 2007, and he signed this sign, but it looks like it's since been replaced. The signature's gone. Uh, sadly, things are different for Uncle Michael now, or affectionately called the Duke. And, uh, in life, there's no guarantees. So, from me, it's a nod to you, Duke. <laughs> hey, true blue, don't say you're gone. Just say you've knocked off for a smoker. That you'll be back later on Hey, true blue Hey, true blue Give it to me straight Face to face Are you really disappearing? And just another dying right Say true blue True blue Is it me or you? Is it mom and dad? Is it a cockatoo? Is it standing by your mind? You when he's in a fire Or would just fade your mind? True You tie it up with oil just to keep the show on the road. Hey, true blue. Hey, true blue. Now be fitting. Is your heart still there? If they sell a sound like sponge cakes Do you really care? It ain't true Is it mom and dad? 
Is it a cockatoo? And is it standing by your mind? When he's in a fight Or just fade your mind To the room I'm asking you To the Is it me and you? Is it my Is it a cockatoo? Is it standing?